With the recent release of the GoPro Hero 11, it's time for my annual GoPro accessories guide. I do one of these every year because I buy the newest GoPro every year and I use it to make travel vlogs and videos for my travel channel, Gemini Discover. And I'm always finding new products that I want to introduce you to. So here are 12 products that I have personally tested and use regularly. You can check out product links to everything I'm going to talk about in the video description below. And I'll also have chapter markers if you want to skip around. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, and I'll talk about them more later on in this video, but in case you skip out early, there's a link and a promo code in the video for 65% off your order. Number one is a battery charger. So spare GoPro batteries are an obvious must-have. You get one Enduro battery with the purchase of your Hero 11, but what you don't get is a spare battery or a battery charger. Now you can buy two spare Enduro batteries and a quick double charger from GoPro for about $60, which is a decent deal because the batteries alone are about $25 each. But the issue I have with the GoPro Dual Charger, I mean, I have one, but I don't have it here with me because I honestly don't use it very often, because those batteries can get easily disconnected if you bump the charger. So since I'm often charging batteries while I'm traveling, there are two other battery charger options that I'm really liking instead. The first is the $40 ZG Cine PSG10 charging case, which I've talked about in a separate video, but its main advantage is that it has a built-in rechargeable battery. So you can charge your batteries on the go or use the case to charge another device like your cell phone. But the main downside to that charging case is that it's a little too big to put in your pocket and it's expensive. It's about $40. So instead, I've been preferring the First Power Quick Charger. This is much smaller, it's closer to the size of a cell phone because it doesn't have a built-in battery. Now this does mean that you have to plug it in via the USB-C cable to charge the batteries and it takes about two and a half hours to fully charge them. But you can fit three spare GoPro batteries in here and I find that as long as these three batteries are fully charged, plus the fourth battery that's in my GoPro, this is more than enough juice to get me through a full day of shooting. Now you can charge all kinds of GoPro batteries from the new ones for the Hero 9, 10, and 11. They all take the same GoPro batteries. And you can even charge older GoPro batteries as far back as the Hero 5 if you use the included battery resizing clips. You'll also find two micro SD card slots for storing spare memory cards. And I personally recommend getting the SanDisk 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte cards to support 4K and 5K shooting. Best of all, this charging case only costs $15. And in my opinion, it's a must have for any GoPro user. Now GoPro sound quality has been getting better and better, especially since the Hero 9. The built-in internal microphones do a really great job of picking up ambient audio and human voices if you're vlogging. But the camera sound really falls apart if there's wind. Now you can use the built-in wind reduction setting in the camera, but it makes your resulting audio sound kind of funky. Okay, now we've got wind reduction settings in auto and no base layer. I've got it right here. This is what it sounds like. So recently, I took the advice that a lot of you gave me on my previous GoPro accessory videos, and I tried out the GoPro Wind Slayer. And you guys, you were right. So this little piece of foam does a really awesome job of blocking out the wind while retaining audio quality. This is what it sounds like with the Wind Slayer on and wind reduction set to off. There is quite a bit of wind out, and uh, now I'm actually gonna take off the Wind Slayer so you can hear the difference. Here's the Wind Slayer. This is what it sounds like with wind reduction off and no Wind Slayer. So the Wind Slayer is super simple and straightforward. All you do is stick your GoPro inside of this foam and you just use it as is. And it actually works out really well. Now, even though the Wind Slayer is great, sometimes I still need better audio. And when that's the case, I turn to my wireless microphones. Now to attach any kind of external microphone to your GoPro, you have to have the GoPro Media Mod or the GoPro Mic Adapter because there's no built-in 3.5 millimeter microphone jack on recent GoPros and you can't use USB-C microphones with GoPros either. So if you're not familiar with wireless microphones, here's an example right here. They consist of a receiver which plugs into your camera and a transmitter, which lately they've been having these built-in microphones, which is really nice. So all you have to do is clip the transmitter to yourself and you've got a wireless microphone system. Now, in my opinion, wireless microphones give you the best audio quality because you've got a microphone directly on you. So you don't have to be right next to the camera for your voice to be picked up. 
Now I've been a longtime fan of the Rode Wireless Go 2, and we still use them because it is a great microphone. But you guys who follow the channel know that I recently fell in love with the DJI microphone, and it's still my all-time favorite because it is smaller than the Rode, and it comes with this compact charging case. And the Rode doesn't come with the charging case, so in terms of usability, DJI is winning all around, especially with this DJI microphone. Next, I'm gonna take a minute to make dinner and talk about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. For this segment, I'll be filming all of the B-roll with the GoPro Hero 11 Black and using accessories that I'll be talking about later on in this video. So tonight, I'll be making bulgogi meatballs. That's pretty cool because if you guys don't know, I'm Korean and I'm really impressed that HelloFresh is serving up ethnic recipes. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of cooking elaborate meals on a regular basis especially as a working mom. HelloFresh delivers fresh, pre-portioned ingredients with step-by-step -step recipes right to your door. So not only do I spend less time grocery shopping and prepping food, but I also end up with less wasted food after I'm done cooking. Most meals are ready in 30 minutes or less, and the instructions are really easy to follow, even for a cooking novice like myself. And I love that HelloFresh offers a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes, including dietary restrictions like vegetarian and pescatarian. In our house, we're mostly paleo, especially Julian, who really does not like carbs. So let's see how he likes these bulgogi meatballs. Oh, well, he's a fan, yep. I knew it, that's the Korean in him coming out. Anyway, if you guys wanna try out HelloFresh for yourself, go to hellofresh.com and use the code GeminiConnect65 to save 65% off, plus free shipping. That's promo code GeminiConnect65 for 65% off, plus free shipping. And with that, let's get back to GoPro accessories. So I filmed the majority of that cooking video segment with the Telesen neck mount, which is my new favorite accessory that I've been using to get the POV perspective. It is super stiff and it doesn't wobble, unlike the other flimsy necklace mounts that I've tried using in the past. And it's super easy to use. All you do is unhook the clasp, wrap it around your neck, and snap the clasp into place and attach your GoPro via the magnetic mount. It's much easier to use in the GoPro chesty or other chest mounts that are heavy and hard to position. Another alternative to the necklace mount is the bite mount, which also helps you get that POV perspective, but at the cost of you not being able to speak because the camera is being held in place by your mouth. So in particular, I've been liking the bite mount for filming action sequences, like swimming. I used to swim while holding an extension pole like the new Bear Floating Grip, which is fairly compact at nine inches long, but it can extend to 22 inches. However, I like to use both hands when I'm swimming underwater, and this is really hard to do with a selfie stick. So the bite mount has been working out much better for me lately. You might notice that out of the box, GoPros are not good at taking close-up detail shots. The minimum focusing distance is 30 centimeters or 11.8 inches, which is decently far away. But if you swap out the stock GoPro filter for this 15 times macro filter, you can get really up close to your subject and capture lots of detail. So in my cooking video, I got those close up shots of the meatballs using this macro filter. And you can see that it does a really great job of getting those details. Now, if macro lenses aren't your thing, be sure to check out Freewell's ND and Pol polarizing filters. These fit just like the macro lens does, and while they don't let you take close-up shots, they will help you balance out the light if your image looks overexposed. Or in the case of polarizers, they cut down on reflective surfaces and saturate your colors. Now, if you're gonna capture close-up or macro shots or shoot in low lighting, like in my kitchen, then you wanna add an external light. This will make your low-light GoPro footage even better. The light that I used to film while doing my cooking video was the Freewell 28 centimeter tube light, a wireless RGB light that changes colors and lasts a pretty long time when the battery is charged. I had that light mounted on the Logitech Mevo table stand, which is quite heavy duty and can actually support cameras or accessories. And in my cooking video, I had the light angled so that it was almost like a desk lamp to illuminate me as I cooked and also make sure that the colors in my food video looked bright and accurate. 
While the Freewell light is portable, it is a bit on the bulky side, and it is hard to mount on top of a GoPro. So if you want to have a rugged light to sit on top of your camera while you're filming action, then I really recommend using the Loom Cube 2.0. You can have a version with these filters that can soften the light and change the color temperature. Speaking of low light, I did a separate video with the best GoPro settings for filming in the dark. But above all, this is the one time that I recommend using a GoPro gimbal. When you have enough light, HyperSmooth, especially the new Auto Boost and the Hero 11, is really good and you arguably don't need a gimbal to get stable shots. However, in low light, HyperSmooth built-in stabilization really doesn't work too well. So this is when a gimbal can really help you out. Gimbals are also great for shooting moving time lapses. But there are a couple of GoPro gimbals in particular that I've tried out and I really like, but lately I've been really liking the Inky Falcon Plus because this is a small gimbal that is also able to support the media mod, and not many GoPro gimbals out there can do that. All right, now back to GoPro mounts. So when I'm not using the necklace mount or the bite mount, I'm typically using the PGY Tech mini tripod or the Insta360 invisible selfie stick. Now the Insta stick, I've talked talked about this before, it is so sturdy and it extends just by pulling the camera on one end out. However, my one complaint about it is not having a built-in tripod and at times the stick can be a little large and draw attention. So when I want a mini tripod and a smaller overall vlogging rig, I reach for the PGY Tech mini tripod, which can also extend out into a selfie stick similar to the Insta360 stick, but it's a lot shorter. And that actually is nice because it ends up being a lot smaller and it doesn't stand out so much, and it's easier to fit in my pocket. As an added bonus, both of these mounts are also very affordable, so I recommend picking up one or both of them. Next up is a classic GoPro grip that I used in my cooking video, and I've been using more and more for the YouTube videos that I make, and that is the GoPro Jaws. This is a classic mount that's great for clipping the GoPro to a table or a countertop edge, or even a stroller or bicycle handles if you get creative. You can use it for POV shots, or I like to use it a lot to put the camera in odd angles where it's normally hard to stick my tripod. Now I've mentioned a lot of GoPro mounts so far in this video, and I truly do use them all because they all help me in some way to get a variety of shots, so it's not just the same shot or angle that you're looking at all the time. And because I'm changing my mounts out a lot, I like to use quick releases to speed up that process. So if you're not familiar with them, an action camera quick release such as the snap mounts or the Ulanzi GP4 magnetic release or the Ulanzi claw are super helpful for changing mounts quickly and not waste time fiddling with the GoPro fingers and the screw because that takes a lot of time to take this out and put it back together. Now I did a separate video comparing the most popular GoPro quick releases but in summary, I like snap mounts for mounting my camera to my car, but in general, I find them too heavy and bulky to use with my other mounts on a regular basis. I prefer to use the Ulanzi GP4 magnetic quick release because it is much smaller, cheaper, and just so easy to use. I also really like the Ulanzi claw because they make a dedicated backpack clip, which is my last must-have item. So the necklace mount that I mentioned earlier is really great for capturing POV shots. And even though it's solid, it can get jerked around a little bit as you move because it's relying a lot on gravity to stay stable. So when I'm planning fast action shots, I actually reach for a backpack clip instead. Now there are several different types out there, but my favorite has been the Ulanzi Claw because it has that built-in quick release as I mentioned in the previous point. But lately, I've also been liking the pack strap from Scotty Makes Stuff. Now this is arguably better than the camera clips like the claw or the Peak Design Capture Clip because it's wider so it can accommodate thicker and wider backpack straps. And best of all, you can swivel the GoPro from side to side to get the perfect angle. On other camera clips, you can usually only position the camera up and down, not side to side. But anyway, no matter what kind of backpack clip you choose, it's really great to have for shooting that POV perspective, but also conveniently holding your camera while you're in transit. 
just be sure to stick a quick release on it and then you can pop that camera from your backpack clip to a handheld mount and back and forth in a matter of seconds. And it really speeds up your filming workflow. So in conclusion, those are 12 must-have GoPro accessories that I've been using a lot for my Hero 10 and my Hero 11. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for GoPro accessories that I haven't mentioned yet or tried out yet, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.